So, um, welcome to the ANSYS Fluent uh, Free Surface uh, tutorial. Uh, in this uh, example, I will show you how to model a microfluidics device. Um, what you see over here is basically the, uh, the reservoir, which is the green part. This is the, uh, <clears throat> uh, the chamber where the sample would uh, enter. Uh, it's connected to these microfluidic channels that expands, and then you have an exit at the end here. So this model is already comes in with the mesh. So we are going to focus on how to set up the model in VOF. First thing we need to do is uh, to basically go through the outline view. And under general, uh, what we want to do is, is select pressure base and the Velocity formulation is absolute. These are all the defaults. In the free surface problem, it's a transient simulation. So we need to click on transient in this case. Next thing what we need to do is, is select the, the types of physics that we're interested in. Uh, in. In this case, we have a free surface. And then we know that this is a, a, a Reynolds numbers are small, so the, which means the laminar flow. First thing we want to do is turn on the, the multi physics. So we can do a right click on this and edit. And we can see that uh, the model has a, a, a volume of fluids. Uh, and then we can take the defaults in this case, where the um, volume fraction parameters are explicit. And uh, the volume fraction uh, cutoff is 1 to the minus 6, and the current number is 0.25. Um, there are two phases. So here, uh, there's two uh, basically Euler Euler uh, phases that we're solving. And the phases that we have, one is air and the other one is liquid. So we have air and then we have liquid, which is, we will define this as water. And uh, uh, in terms of interactions, uh, we, uh, this is where we actually put the surface uh, tension coefficient for water, so it's 0. 0.0. 72 uh, dynes. And we take the, uh, the, the defaults, which is that we're basically modeling the surface tension uh, and where we have the continuum um, surface force and then the wall adhesion. So we take this and we move on to the next uh, physics that we need to turn on, and that is the laminar flow. So we basically do right click on viscous. Uh, we uh, select the laminar here, uh, and all, all the other models are related to turbulent flow. Okay, so now we can collapse the, uh, the, the modules and move into the materials. On the materials, we have fluids and solid, but since this is only a, a fluid uh, uh, model, we can basically ignore the solid and just go into the flu uh, fluid. So if you just click on uh, the, the plus button here that would give you the two different fluids that we have. We have air and water liquid. So water is basically uh, the default. So you can see that, you know, it basically it has a density and the viscosity that comes in. So we can just take that. Uh, and then water liquid, uh, you can basically read this from the Fluent database and copy it and then it appears under your menu. So now we have basically defined the two, two fluids. Uh, the next thing we need to do is define the cell conditions. So in this case, the cell conditions are essentially uh, two different regions. We have what we call the, in this case, it's called the cassette. Um, and, and we can take a look at this by displaying it in a new window. So you can see what, it, what we're talking about. This is basically this region. Um, and then we have essentially uh, we have essentially the uh, slump, which is uh, the um, uh, the inlet, or basically the reservoir. So we can look at that as well. There you go. So let's close this and go back to our original um, view that we had. Um, so what we do is is basically for 
selecting the, the right properties, we need to double right click and edit. And then here we take the default, which is the reference frame. Um, and then the phases, it needs to be a mixture. Everything else, you can just leave it as um, default. We do the same for the slump, which is the, a reservoir. Again, we leave it as mixture, and then we'll take the defaults. We collapse all these uh, so it's easier to navigate, and we are now moving on to the boundary conditions. So under boundary conditions, we have three different types. We have internal, outlet, and walls. And the internals is basically when uh, the, the different zones are contacting each other. There is actually an interface, but that interface or internal um, uh, boundary condition is uh, essentially um, not uh, taken into account in terms of uh, the calculations. What we want to look at is basically the outlets. So in this case, for example, we have an outlet pressure um, that is at the end, and then we have another outlet, which is here, because in this case, the sample uh, is placed into the chamber um, and uh, it's open to basically air. What we do is this, we edit this, we look at this, and we can see that it's, uh, it's an outlet um, and then this is uh, basically uh, pressure specifications uh, gauge, and then it's zero because it's at uh, it's at atmospheric pressure, and we just take the uh, basically the default. Uh, next thing we got to do is the same thing for um, um, for uh, the slump, which is basically the top part here. Again, we're going to go in here and make sure that we take the default. Uh, and the next thing we need to do, we also need to uh, to make sure that the the right boundary condition is applied. In this case, it's a pressure outlet. So you'll see that this is check marked here. So it's a pressure outlet here, and then we do the same thing for um, the outlet at the end of the uh, device. And we see that it's also selected as a pressure outlet. Um, in addition to that, we also need to set up the, the contact angle for the walls uh, because this is uh, basically a surface tension drip and flow. The contact angle, which is a function of the material, plays a huge role in uh, the displacement and the uh, stability of the displacement. Um, if we look at, in this case, we open up the um, uh, what I call the reservoir. Uh, we can see that um, uh, the contact angle here uh, can be specified, in this case it's 45 degrees, which means it's a uh, hydrophilic um, material, um, basically water loving. Um, but you can also uh, basically apply uh, this contact angle as an expression. Uh, it could be parameters, could be a user-defined profile. So any of those are as a possibility. So basically, that's what we want to do. We want to uh, set up the contact angle here, and we take the defaults for everything else, uh, because in this case, it's a stationary wall. There's a no slip boundary condition uh, that's applied uh, on the walls. And uh, in case of the uh, the the basically the the chamber um, the uh, the contact angle is different, so it's 90 degrees. Um, so uh, it's, it's closer to basically it's, it's not hydrophobic and it's not really hydrophilic because that's the, really the angle that um, we can distinguish. If it's like bigger than 90, then it's considered um, uh, hydrophilic, hydrophobic, and then if it's uh, smaller, then it's considered uh, hydrophilic. So it'd be interesting to see what happens if you change the contact angle and what, how the displacement would be. One of the issues that usually we face in microfluidic devices is that um, you know, air is trapped or displacement is not uh, basically stable and you have uh, regions where you have uh, residues are left behind or you know, air is trapped. Um, we can collapse this and now we can actually move on to uh, the last part, which is essentially 
setting up the um, uh, uh, the location for where uh, the liquid will start. So in this case, what we need to do, we need to go to adapt, and then we would select manual, uh, and we create what's called a, a cell register. This is essentially a, um, a location for where we put the, the free surface uh, level. And so in this case, we can look at uh, one that already exists, it's called region one, we can edit it and you can see these numbers are basically inputted. And if you're wondering how you get that, you basically uh, uh, need to understand where that liquid level is that you want to place in the geometry. And then by knowing the coordinates, you can put the X, Y, Z uh, coordinates there to create this. So this patch is needed when we're doing the initialization. Um, so we've pretty much uh, finished everything on uh, setting up. The next thing we got to do is actually set up the uh, solution. So we can do that from here. Uh, if we double click on the methods, uh, we take the basically the, the default, which is the simple and then the um, for the spatial discretization, the least square uh, cell base. Um, and here, uh, the important thing is, is that when uh, we are um, uh, basically uh, initializing, we are initializing it with the, um, the patch. So now we can go to the initialization. And here we have basically the patch that we can essentially, it's been um, add it so it knows that this is where the initial condition is. And we will click, click on initialize and then um, the problem is ready to be run. Um, the last thing we got to do is, is set up the, 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 the run calculations, which we can do this here. Uh, we need to put the time step, and in this case, because it's a VOF, we need to put a very small time step. 1 e to the negative 5, uh, and this is like 10,000, so it's about basically one total seconds, and every uh, time step will have about 20 uh, basically iterations, which means that because this is a transient simulation, the 20 is actually sufficient, uh, and then this is, gets repeated and um, basically completes. Now, uh, the last thing I want to show you is, is basically how, because this is a transit simulation, we, we don't want to run this at the moment, but I want to show you the results. And so this is basically the progression of the, uh, the uh, fluid as it's moved. So, so in this case, uh, red is um, uh, the liquid and then the blue is air. And you can see that as time progresses, um, uh, the liquid is displacing air and it's filling. And uh, in this case, the displacement is favorable um, because the contact angle, as we said, is um, uh, basically uh, hydrophilic. All right, thank you for your attention. Um, uh, looking forward to um, showing you more on what you can do with uh, ANSYS Fluent.